G'day and welcome back. Today I've got not one, not two, but three radios. I've got two exactly the same uh, and I'm not sure what the brand is. Is it Ar Arwen? Is it Ar Ar Arvin? I think it is. It's a bit hard to read that, but I think it's Arvin. A-R-V-I-N. So I've got two of those. Uh, I've also got this one here. and This is an Emerson. The two Arvins are all American 5. This one feels like it's got a transformer and I haven't looked up any details on any of these radios. But this one's got a bit of weight in it, so it feels like it might have a transformer in it. I think I bought these on Marketplace from a gentleman. He was American and he'd emigrated to Australia in the early 2000s, I think he said. These were his father's and uh, his father put them away, I think he said, in either the 60s or the 80s. I've forgotten now. It was quite a few weeks ago I got these. But they were in the cupboard there for a certain amount of years. And the gentleman's father said, do you want to take these to Australia with you? So he did, and he got them here and then packed them away. Uh, he was just trying to thin some stuff out. I think they were moving, actually. So he wanted to get rid of this stuff. He put it on Marketplace, and I bought the three of them from him. This one's got a bit missing here, and hopefully it's inside the case. Um, and this one, the knob's a bit chewed out. The knobs look a bit ratty. They're sort of like the plastic's breaking down. So what I'm going to do is make one radio out of the two uh, using all the best parts of one. So that'll be a, a pristine model. Uh, the other one will be as it is. I don't think I'd even bother trying to repair it. I'll just put it in. That's what it is. And uh, we'll just leave that as a, a second radio. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to do one of them though. And it'll probably be this one. There's certainly the case is better on this one. I'll get rid of the uh, this second Marvin and the Emerson. And we'll just pull this one apart and see what's inside. I managed to find a schematic, it's a typical All-American 5 radio. The model number is 450. Now I'll try and get it apart. These knobs really don't feel very good. No, I'm not keen on that. I'll try another idea. Uh, I'll just undo that nut. So the two aerial wires here are just not going to let me pull that back away any further than that. Uh, perhaps I'll take the bottom screws out, we'll take the whole thing out. I've left the knobs on, I can't get them off, I don't want to break the knobs. Uh, so I'm going to leave them in there and hopefully the chassis will let them slide off. Ooh, uh, maybe not. All right, that's moved it enough to let me get that off now. There we go. So I should be able to lift that up and it all should stay there. There we go. All right, well, there it is. And chassis is nice and clean. That'll, that'll clean up really nicely. And typical five valves, output transformer, capacitor, tuning. Here's the bottom. And this smoothing cap is exactly the same that was in my DeWald the other day, or same brand anyway, same, looks the same. It's slightly different, it's got a wire coming out the bottom there, with mine had the wires all coming out the top. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, quite clean in here, very clean actually. Lots of the old wax caps, I'll change all those. Uh, here's the across the line cap, or otherwise known as the death cap. Uh, I'm going to leave that in while I turn it on to see how it goes. If they go short, of course the, uh, the, the main shorts out and they often explode. This one looks in pretty good condition physically. So I'll probably leave that in just for fun to see what it does. Here's the across the line cap here. There's your active going in there, hopefully. Uh, there's your neutral going in there, hopefully. And there's the across the line cap there joining the two together. That's just to get rid of any uh, interference that might be on the line. So you can cut that out for testing purposes. It's not going to affect it. Uh, you might get a bit more interference. I'll replace that with a proper cap when I'm doing the caps. Now what I did notice is it's got two symbols for ground. Um, so I'm assuming it's got a B minus wire on it, I guess, and that in fact is chassis ground, and this is B minus. And if I'd taken two seconds, I can see here it's got uh, common B minus, so that arrow means B minus. So there must be a wire running through there that connects it above the chassis. All in all, very competent uh, drawing this. It's uh, very, very good. It's got all the information in the one place and uh, nicely laid out. Everything's there. It's terrific. Now, there's no reason this radio won't work. I don't think it got put in the cupboard because it stopped working. I think it got put in the cupboard because something better replaced it. Physically, it looks great underneath. 
um, I'm going to replace this cord with something if I can find something and uh, I'll plug it in and see how it works. Now I've connected some wire here. I haven't got any of the American style plugs so I've put an Australian plug on it. Now this is of course dangerous because somebody's going to plug it into the 240. I'm the only one that runs these things so I'm not going to do that uh, but I will have to try and find some American plugs. I think I've seen them at one of the um, suppliers online so I'll order some. All right, I'll flip the chassis over. We'll see how we go. I'm ready to give this a go. I've got my Variac set on 117 volts, which is what the radio is rated at. I've upgraded the dim bulb from my normal 60 to 100 watts to try and accommodate the uh, lower voltage. I've got it set to dim bulb. This is coming through an isolation transformer. The isolation transformer has no reference to ground. So if I touch ground and the radio, uh, there's no path. There's no reason for it to flow through me into the uh, ground. It doesn't matter which pile already it is either because as I said there's no reference to ground. All right so 117 dim bulb. Uh, I'll turn the radio on and I'll flick it up and uh, we probably won't see much in that dim bulb. It's a very dark glass on that one and we'll just see what it does. Whoa that is very bright. Wow what's it doing? It's dropped the voltage so low it's lost my uh, meter there for a second. It's working. Yeah. Wow, it's got some hum in it. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. That's got so much hum in there, those filter capacitors are shot. It's also very garbled, so that probably means the coupling capacitor is shot as well. So I'll just flip it over, we'll just do a little test. Now here's the normal setup, output valve there, output transformer. The coupling cap is this one here, C7. And it's blocking that 44 volts on that plate there from getting down to the uh, grid. So pin 5 is the grid, that should have 0 volts on it DC, and this one here will be plus 5 volts, uh, so that will give it a 5 volt bias toward between the 0 and the 5. So I'm going to check here, and make sure we've got 5, and I'll check pin 5, and make sure we've got 0. And I've got to remember, I've got to remember to connect to the B-, minus, not the chassis. So I'll put the power back on again. What's this crazy light bulb? Yeah, okay. So it's not drawing any power now, then it starts drawing. Now it's not drawing. Stop working. Hmm, uh, okay, it's not working now. I'll just flip it over again. Hang on. I'll just. Wiggle the valves around, maybe they're not. Let's try it again. Nope, nothing. Not doing anything. I'll just turn it over again and check the bottom. I've connected the meter to just after the switch here, and here's the other uh, lead coming in from the mains. Let's see if we're actually getting past the switch. Yeah, 118. Hmm. Alright. I've just turned this on again. The light came on bright again and went dim and then bright and then dim and then everything dropped off again. So it's got an intermittent, uh, or it's got something getting too hot I suppose. And probably I should just cut my losses and change these caps while I can. So I'll just check the voltages on these filaments. Uh, that should be, that's the first one. So I've got 117 volts, that then goes off. Oh, it goes right down here to there, so it should be the same. One next to it should be something to. No, it's nothing working. 178 on one side. One, two, three. That's number three. The that should be coming out. So there's nothing, nothing going out. So it's got 117 going into the filament, and nothing coming out. 
just wobbling the valve there or the tube this should be the 50C5 where it is there uh, it's going in form comes out through well it's clearly not coming out of three here's the tube here I've taken it out and three and four are the filament and it says it's open circuit so just having a look at the schematic uh, goes in it just runs through the filaments here and goes straight to the uh, B minus so there's nothing there if there was something wrong with capacitors uh, or shorting out or something it's not going to affect that the only thing I can think of that explains that uh, globe operation the dim bulb uh, was that the filament in here has shorted to one of the other elements and uh, cleared itself and then started working but next time I turned it on it didn't clear itself so I just burnt the filament out now of course I've got a spare in the other radio so uh, I can take that out and try that one now that'll be my last one so I don't want to burn that out if, <laughs> if it's a fault somewhere else on the radio I've taken the back off the other radio and just looking at it it's in way better condition than the one I'm working on uh, mainly in the fact that the cords in one piece it's very supple it's like new so I might um, use this one as the main one and I'll swap it out in the case because this case has got a crack in it so I'll take this one out and we'll have a look at this one here's the other chassis and the reason it's got a better cord in it is somebody's changed it at some point now this looks a later version than the other one now something that stands out here is this resistor here and it's shaped like a beer barrel there uh, so that's a brown red red that's uh, 1 and uh, 2 12, 1200 here it is here, uh, 1200 watt ohm, so that's it, uh, 1 watt and it is supplying the screens and the plates for the other three valves up here or four valves actually, uh, the tapping off for the plate on this output valve is prior to that so you would think there's some sort of short or high current draw uh, device operating in here that's making that overheat just going back to the original chassis and the problem with the open filament on this tube here, the 50C5 uh, I said maybe it's got a short inside and taken the filament out that way uh, there could have been a short anywhere along this run here which would pull too much current through this valve uh, I haven't checked the other ones, maybe they're all blown uh, from wherever the problem is I'd need to check all these tubes first before I do anything else I've set up my valve tester, I've got a 12BA6 valve in there, or tube now I'll test it for short, so this light will come on uh, that's ok on 4 and the rest are ok and let's select a 135 and we'll test it and that valve's fine I've put a 12BE6 in there now so I'll put it to short, so I'll turn it on so I'll check it for shorts, we're allowed one on 4 Okay, and that one tests fine as well, good I've put the 12AT6 in now and that's the uh, detector and uh, pentode so I'll check for shorts, we're allowed one on four uh, back to selector one to regular and the pentode's working so we put the selector to number five and this goes to 100 and we read it on this bottom scale here now it's in the bad scale, that's that's about where it normally ends up might get a bit more than that occasionally next one is 6 yeah, and that's just slightly better it'll be fine now I've put the 35W4 rectifier in I've done all the low voltage valves first then I'll move up the scale I don't want to start at the top and then forget to turn it back and blow the filament out on one of the other valves so I always start at the bottom and move up I'll just check it for shorts, it said ignore 4 and 6, there's 4, 6 ok, go back to 5 and it's a good tube ok, now I've put the 50C5 in, this is the one that's faulty the, the filament's open on it uh, it says 50C5, you're allowed to uh, put it on the G the filaments, and socket 3, and the selector's on 1 and 30 now I've got it on shorts, I've turned it on now this obviously is not going to work I just want to see if they're where the shorts are we're allowed shorts on 2, 4 and 5 so there's 2, 4 
that's five sorry no short on five, four okay so that didn't prove anything I'll go to yeah so that didn't prove anything uh, and of course it's not working so it's not going to work there now here's the tube out of the donor radio so that's uh, two four you're allowed five right that's perfect 30 let's see if it works so that's a serviceable tube as well so all the other tubes are okay I think it just had a dodgy tube in it and that's why it's blown now if you recall uh, before all that went pear-shaped I was going to check the voltage at pin 5 and pin 1 of the uh, output valve here and just make sure we've got 5 volts here and uh, 0 1 pin 5 this is the original chassis I'm pretty confident I've put that valve in I think the other valve was faulty I don't think there's anything wrong with the radio that caused it to fail so this time we'll watch the bulb and it should just come on dim dim off and then come back dim again so let's watch it that looks much better under these circumstances but does it mean other areas of policing okay it's working again uh, we've got low voltage here so it's not working to its full capacity this is the cathode so that should be five uh, we're on restricted power so two's okay at this stage now this is the grid or the coupling capacitors connected to and we should have zero on there ah uh, look we've got a little bit um, it's not doing too bad though so, so that garbled sound is probably not from this capacitor uh, it'll be the main filter capacitor letting too much AC onto the line not a not a good clean DC line but the radio is working so so that's great just before I pack up for the day I just replaced that uh, coupling capacitor so I've cut it here put another one in its place just to see if that does affect that uh, poor sound so I'll put the power back on there's zero DC on that grid now okay so that's made no difference at all the garbling is from the AC uh, not being filtered properly so I'm going to pack up for the night and tomorrow I'll uh, tackle it and uh, change some capacitors good morning I'm back again uh, the first thing I want to attack is this uh, smoothing cap here or the filter cap the capacitor's got three capacitors in it uh, it's got two 20s and a 40 uh, all at 150 uh, volts and I'm just trying to decide what to do how to how to do this now the easiest way would be to put a solder tag strip in there and just mount it and then mount some capacitors on it uh, once this is gone there's a fair bit of room in there so it wouldn't be bad these are the capacitors I could use if I use the solder tag strip uh, they're pretty big though here's the old defunct valve next to it just for uh, reference to size now these are 600 volts um, I can't really get anything less than that it's either down in the 50s or goes up to 450 uh, or 600 and I'm not sure it's going to fit in there neatly now I've got some little 10 microfarad um, capacitors here so I could uh, parallel two each to make 20 uh, that's a smaller option and I've also got a 450 volt one here in a slightly smaller package so I could put that in there as well now another option I have is to not use the solder tag strip at all and remake this capacitor and fit it all inside there because I've got everything pre-made for this I've already done one of these uh, I've got all the artwork and everything ready uh, I just need to change the numbers on it so I think I'd prefer to do that it'll make it a lot neater I don't know why I'm just going to waste time but anyway so there's an easy option and a hard option I'm going to go for the hard option here's the four 10 microfarad uh, ones which will fit in the tube like that so I said I've got some ends made up so I'll just connect all these commons together in the center the other one I'll mount between them and I'll mount that onto that common as well the common can come out the center of the uh, capacitors here the wire straight out the back uh, through the plate here and that'll be the B minus and I've got another plate to put here to make sure the connections don't uh, short out between these ones 
I've joined all the negative uh, terminals on the capacitors together and then soldered them onto a wire which is running at the bottom of the capacitor, or it will do, and that'll be the B minus. Now I've just got to pair these together and that should give me my 20 microfarad and that'll be the neutral or the negative. Here's the other 47 microfarad capacitor. I've glued it onto a little plastic disc here as an insulator. Uh, I've just got to pick up the uh, negative there and these two wires will go up there and that should all fit in the container. I've slid the capacitors into the tube it's going to go into uh, just to make sure it's all symmetric and all lined up. I was going to put some hot glue on these four uh, capacitors here to hold them in a bunch. Well that, that uh, glue's set now. Now there's a plug to go in the end here as well and uh, that'll finish that end off. Now with a bit of luck I should be able to pull this out again. There it goes. Now for no reason at all I've got a bit of heat shrink. I'm just going to shrink that around these wires to keep them in position on the uh, on the top of the capacitor there. As I said, there's no real reason at all. And just for the next bloke, I'll just write the uh, capacity of the capacitor underneath. It's 47. It's actually 450 volts. There we go. I'm confusing everyone. There you go. I've made up a sleeve now and uh, glued on the label and uh, it's ready to go together. I've made this a bit darker than the DeWald um, sleeve was, uh, so uh, it looks a bit more authentic, I think. Now, I've just taken that end plate off the wires. I'll put that on later. So I should be able to put that in there. What I'm going to do is put hot glue on these four capacitors and glue them to the tube. Uh, and then push the end cap on and that will glue the end cap as well to the uh, tube and the capacitors. That's about where that wants to go. I'll do the same at this end. This um, capacitor here actually touches the inside of the uh, stopper here, so I can put some uh, adhesive there, and I'll just put a little bit around the edge just to kind of hold it all. The main, main adhesive will be the uh, top of the capacitor there. So there it is, all done, and uh, all I have to do now is dip it in some wax and we're finished. I need to remove this clamp that's holding the capacitor in, and it's soldered to the base there. So I've got my big iron here, we should be able to get it off, as long as I don't melt all the other bits around it. Okay. They've put the clamp around the capacitor and then just spot welded it here, but there's a bit of gap between the spot weld and the where the um, edge is here. So hopefully, no, oh, I broke the spot weld. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll dip the capacitor in wax once. I'll put this on and then maybe put a rivet through it or something. Then I'll re-dip it and that'll hold this in place for me. Well, there's my wax uh, ready to go. Um, I've put a bit of tape around one of the wires that's on the bottom there just to stop it getting wax all over it. And we'll just try and stick it in there. All right, I've given it one coat. I had my hand in the way of the camera there. I'll just do it again. So I'll let that dry and I'll put the clamp on. I've drilled a hole in the um, bracket there so I can put a rivet in it. And I want that, I think about there, there's a line there where you're supposed to line it up. And it doesn't go anywhere near it. I'm a bit surprised there, I thought they were the right diameter. Hmm. 
All right, I'll have to go and re-jig that. All right, I've moved the hole around a bit and uh, we should be right now. Good. I'll give it another dunking. Well, that's cooled off. Um, I'm happy with that now. Well, there's the two together. Slightly different colour, perhaps, but uh, this one looks good. The colour actually looks pretty good on that. It looks better than the original. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to try and solder this back in. Alright, that'll do. I'll take it inside and wire it in. I'm back in my workbench now. There's the capacitor, of course. I've got to connect all these wires. Now the one up here, this is the B minus. Here's the B minus wire coming off the capacitor. It goes onto the switch here. I tested these resistors here and they're all a bit out of tolerance. So uh, I'm going to have to change them first. So I don't want to do too much. I want to just put this back together with the new filter capacitor in there and see if it uh, fixes that uh, garbled sound. I've removed the resistor from just here, 470 ohm. And we're reading six, 700, so a little bit too high, so I'll change that one. Here's another one here, that's a yellow, violet and yellow, so that's 470k. And we've got 453, so I'll leave that one in. Uh, here's the other one, that's um, red, 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 so that's 2, 2 and 2, so uh, 220, oh, sorry, 2.2k, so it's, that's 3.3k, so it's well over. So I hope this isn't going to go through the radio, I'll be here all day. I've wired in the new capacitor. Uh, I had to change about three capacitors and three resistors that uh, I had to undo to get the uh, new capacitor in, so I might as well change them while I'm there. But I haven't changed anything else. Uh, we'll see if that's fixed that gurgling problem, or gargling problem, I should say. And we'll see how we go. The light's working okay. Should be working. Okay. Well, that's got rid of some of it. It's certainly not perfect, though. Mooney and Zane Bojack with you at Lang Park to get in touch. 0467920222. Or you can send me a tweet at Quentin Hull. Thank you to at Caringbush. Here's to a good game and great call as usual. Yeah, well, it's better. Uh, it's not perfect at all. So that was not the entire fault with the radio, I'd say. So I'm going to continue to replace the capacitors. Uh, a lot of the resistors appear to be out of spec. So I'm going to have to replace a lot of them. This is going to be a bigger job than I thought. Anyway, it's too late today. I'm going to do this in the morning. I'm going to go and watch the rugby, the All Blacks uh, versus Australia. So uh, the All Blacks will make mincemeat of us again, as they always do. I'll revisit this in the morning. Good morning, and uh, had a good night last night. The Aussie Wallabies beat the New Zealand All Blacks in the rugby, so uh, I'll take that as a as a win. We don't get them very often. The the All Blacks are very hard to beat. Anyway, this is a radio fixing program, not uh, Wild World of Sports. Uh, now, I just had a bit of an idea, and I tried this last night. I've had it running. doesn't sound fantastic it's not too bad it's much better than it used to be uh, what I thought I might do is put it on full power I've still got the old uh, death cap across the line cap in there so I'm taking a little bit of a risk but uh, we'll just keep an eye on things I'll just turn it on to full power and see if that makes it any better it was only running on about 80 odd volts so Better get it off that. Protein, and above all, it's low TI, which means that when you um, when you're eating it, consuming it, it releases. Yes, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, it's a bit um, blurry on that music.
Yeah, it's getting a lot of noise off the equipment in here. And is that just on itself, by itself, or do you have some like black tea leaves in there as well? Or yeah, so yeah, it's working a lot better. As I said last night, I'll go and change all these capacitors here. Uh, I will check the resistors as I always do uh, as I go along and uh, change any that are out of spec. I'll replace this across the line uh, capacitor as well. And there's another one that connects the B- minus to the chassis. So I need to replace that and I'll put safety caps in both those positions. So that'll be an X cap and this will be a Y cap. I've ordered some North American polarized plugs uh, to fit to the radio. Uh, they probably won't get here before the end of the week, so I'll uh, have to retrofit it later. I'll leave this old uh, lead in here until such time as I get them, and then I'll put them in, and I'll put a fuse in as well. So I'll probably leave that, and uh, we'll revisit it on another video. But in the meantime, I'll replace all these capacitors. Next time you see it, it'll be all done. Well, there we go. It's all done. I've changed the capacitors and a lot of the resistors as well. Here's the casualty list for this radio. So uh, quite a bit of stuff came out and quite a number of resistors as well. I've replaced the across the line cap with an X cap and I didn't have any Y caps uh, big enough or anywhere near it actually. So I've ordered some new Y caps uh, and I'll change that when that comes in. Okay, so I'll flip it over. We'll try it again and I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of difference actually. Okay, I'll switch it on. I've got it in dim bulb still, and we've got 116 volts there, 115 odd. So everything there is looking pretty normal as to what it was before. This is ABC News. After a long campaign, the votes have been cast in the US election, but with a nation divided, there is much to examine. Well, that doesn't sound much better than the last time I had it on. It's better than originally. It's a totally different uh, noise. And of course, the hum is completely gone now. There's nothing. It almost sounds like there's two signals on top of each other. The same signal, but... Stay up to date with all the coverage post the US election with ABC News. So I wonder, what if I take the antenna lead off? Let's try that here. Because it's got an internal antenna and an external. With Matt Clinch. Back at your company on ABC Radio Sport, on ABC Sports Digital, and via the ABC Listen app. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday, whatever you're up to. The Wallabies certainly are enjoying their Sunday after they produced one of the biggest turnarounds in history. But in the All Blacks, by two points to bounce back from a history making loss in Game 3. The Wallabies holding on against the fast finishing All Blacks at Lang Park as they held to win. Well, that sounds much better. Uh, a lot of hiss in there now because it's got the internal antenna on, but it's got rid of that wobbly sound. I'll go to full power again. There's, uh, everything's running very nicely there. All right, we'll give that a try. What might be possible if you can build some consistency? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I look, I think, you know, I guess that's what we want for people to see, you know, where... Well, that sounds perfect now. I'll just put the antenna back on and see if the problem's there with the full voltage on it. And it's like the All Blacks and, and you need to treasure possession because uh, if you gift it to them they're going to hurt you. If you, if you kick aimlessly and, and don't put pressure on that they're going to hurt you. So, so where we were good in Wellington and where we were good last night was looking after the ball and building some pressure. Oh, well that's working fine now. So it must have been just that it was on the lower voltage than uh, what it was supposed to be. I'm pretty convinced this is going to work okay. I need to clean it all up. There's a lot of dust on this uh, condenser here so I need to get that off before I try and align it. And I'll clean the rest of it as well. It's mainly dust. Uh, I'll just blow it off and then uh, just wipe it down with a uh, a bit of solvent on a cloth and I think that'll about do it. 
Because it's a fair trip to the garage, I thought I'd come up with an idea of getting the stuff out there without me having to carry it. So I've designed this uh, prototype transporter and it's just using household stuff that you'd find around the house. Uh, the main secret is the power supply, it uses an enormous amount of power. And I haven't tested it yet, but I think it should work. Here's the radio here, I want to get it out to the garage, I've entered the coordinates, I've got the uh, system running. Now to get all the power that I need, I've run around the house and I've turned off everything that's not essential, so the beer fridge is still going. Of course that's on its own power supply. I'll just prep everything up here and uh, warm it up and uh, we'll see how we go. Stand by. Okay, I'm ready to energise the transporter in uh, 3, 2, 1. Oh, it worked! I'll go out in the garage and we'll see if it's out there. I'm impressed with my little transporter experience. Um, now, I've already started here. I took all the tubes out and I've started brushing. I forgot to turn the camera on. So it's just brushing up very clean just with the brush. Uh, and I'll just go along now and blow the air compressor on it and that'll get rid of any dust in the little bits I can't get to with the dust there with the brush. So I'll just blow it out now. I've only got low pressure on this uh, gun. All right, that'll do. I could use some solvent on it and probably get a little bit cleaner, but if I start doing that, I've got to go in all the little crevices. I don't think it's worth it. It looks pretty good. What I do need to do is glue this antenna back on. So I've got some adhesive here. I'll just go and dab it on and uh, that'll hold it all right. This is a contact adhesive. I've effectively put adhesive on both sides by just pushing it down and lifting it up again. I'll let it go off for 10 minutes and then I'll just glue it back down. Mm. Alright, that's tacked off, so I'll try and glue it down. I'll just replace the tape that they've got on here that's broken. I'm going to put the uh, valves or the tubes back. Uh, I'll just wipe them off with a cloth. I'm not going to do any more than that. And even that'll probably take some of the writing off. Yeah. So I'll just give them a clean. That's it. That's clean enough. I'll uh, set it up so I can transport it back to my workbench. It's all set now and I'll go and transport it over. I'm back at my workbench and I've just got to bring back the uh, radio so I can finish it off. So again, uh, three, two, one. Uh oh. Uh, try again. Three, two, one. Close, but not good enough. One last time. Three, two, one. Yeah, close enough. It looks like there's still some bugs in this machine, so I'll go and get the radio and just bring it back in. In a minute. All right, there you go. That was a fair walk I had to make there. Now I want to check the alignment, but before I do, I notice this tuning capacitor slips. Um, so, yeah, see, it's not going. So I need to work out what's wrong with that. So this feels quite tight to turn. Um, there's a bearing in there that you can see, and uh, it's got grease on it, but it's all dried out. So I'll just try putting some drops of oil on there and see if that loosens it up or not. It may have loosened a little bit, but it hasn't fixed the problem. I need to isolate these components to work out which one's causing the problem. Uh, so I'm going to take that spring off and just loosen the uh, dial string. Okay, it's definitely in here. That is very tight. 
So I'd better put this spring back on. There's a little bearing on the end of the axle there that I'll see if I can get a bit of oil on that as well. No, still not working. I'll try a bit in here. Just taking the tape off there. I'll try it now. That seems much better. That's good. A bit later on I'll get some solvent in there, clean out the old grease and put some uh, new grease in there. With that repaired we can move on to the alignment. Uh, as usual I'll do the two IF transformers first and the IF frequency is 455. So I'll tune these top and bottom to resonate at 455 and to do the IF I'll inject the signal into the pin 7 of the uh, mixer valve here. Once the IF is aligned I'll adjust the RF part of the set. Here's the oscillator coil here next to the oscillator uh, tuning condenser and there's no uh, slug or anything in there, it's fixed. So we can't adjust that. And here's the antenna coil, and there's no adjustment for that either. So both the oscillator and the antenna coil are fixed. So I'll inject a signal of about 14, 1500 kilocycles into the antenna, and then we'll adjust the oscillator to uh, align the dial, and then we'll adjust the antenna to align with the oscillator. So that, that'll be the only adjustment, there's no other adjustments. I said there was no further adjustments, but of course I've got to uh, set this dial up first. So I'll have to put him back in his little case for a minute. Now the point is pointing to 1600, it should be over here at 550. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to... Oops. So I'll go halfway. Uh, might need a bit more. No, oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. I'll call that centered. I'm all set to go. I've got my meter and that's connected to the plate of the output valve uh, via a 0 0.01 capacitor. I've got my frequency generator set to 455. There we go. I've connected it to the aerial tuning capacitor and that's effectively connecting it to the grid of the mixer. I've disconnected one of the leads off the speaker and run it through my dummy uh, speaker. So uh, we'll get a speaker and four ohms. Here's the bottom of the two IF uh, transformers. Uh, so there's adjusting screws in the middle. Um, this one's wound way in. I'm not sure what's going on there. Seems unusual for most of them to be sticking out a little bit and this one's not, so we'll see what happens there. But I will start my adjustment by unscrewing this. Gotta put some power on. Alright, I'll turn it up. Alright, there's the signal. I'll just kill the noise. I've got the adjusting tool on that lower transformer here, so I'll just adjust it. I'll wind it out and see if it gets any better. That looks about it. Uh, I didn't get much out of that. Now because this radio is already working, I, I'll just peek all these in, in no particular order. It's not going to make any difference. Alright, got a tiny bit out of that one. I've turned the radio around and I'm just on the top of number one transformer there. See if we get anything out of that. Not much. Right, nothing out of that really. Uh, let's transform number two. We might get a bit out of this one. Nope. That's about it. Okay, I've got them uh, pretty close. I've, I'll, uh, I'm going to use a plastic tool now to just do another check and make sure it's uh, there spot on. It's time to align the oscillator with our pointer. Uh, I've put this back in the case and I've marked 1500 on the piece of masking tape here and taken it out. And then I realized, hang on, it's got little marks around the edges. I've been looking at those for a couple of days wondering what they were because they're the alignments. 
This one's to line the pointer up, and I've got that pretty close. Uh, this will be 600. This one will be uh, 1,000. And this one here, whoops, there is it. 14. That'll be 14. That's where it should be lined up. I was tossing up between 15 and 14. Clearly, they want it on uh, 14. So I'll take that off, and we'll align it at 14. Now, I've still got my analog multimeter attached to the plate of the uh, applet valve. And on the back, I just pegged a single loop of wire to induce a signal into the uh, antenna, the loop antenna. So I'm going to set this to 1400. And these are the two adjustments we look at now. Uh, one is the oscillator, this one, and this is the antenna. So I'll peak that at 1400. So with the pointer on 1400, uh, I'll just turn it up slightly so we can hear it. You can hear the signal there somewhere. Now I need to adjust this um, oscillator uh, to peak that and get, get it right on the mark there. So I'll just turn it up again. We'll use the sound to... There it is. We use a screwdriver. That plastic one's got too much flex in it. There we go. So I'll just tune away and then tune back. I'll peak the signal using the tuning condenser. That's about as best we'll get. And we're right on the 14, so that's perfect. Now all we need to do is adjust the antenna. Turn the volume around a bit in the, in the middle of the scale there. That's it. And that's the alignment for this one. Now just for a lark, I'll put this at uh, 600. We'll see if it lines up. Alright, so I'll wind it around to 600 and hopefully the signal will be there. There it is. That's pretty close to 600, so uh, that's a good alignment. Now the first station is 612, we'll just turn that up. Oops. Hello, this is Coronacast, a show all about the coronavirus. I'm health reporter Tegan Taylor. And physician and journalist Dr Norman Swan. Remember to look Turn that off. Um, now that's going through the shop speaker now, so it's got a lot more bass. <laughs> I'll connect the other speaker up, but it's working really well now. I'm very happy with the way it's going. So I'll clear all this equipment off and uh, do the case, and it's ready to put back together. There's the case, and it's in very good condition. Um, not much wrong with it. It really just needs a polish. It's got a bit of a scratch there that needs to come out, and there's another one here somewhere. There it is. So uh, I'll just lightly sand that. It, I think it's Bakelite. It looks like Bakelite. I'll know as soon as I start sanding it. So I'll do the top one first because that's easier to do. It's Bakelite up. Right, well that scratch is gone and that other scratch I just wiped off with my finger was just a bit of dirt okay so all I gotta do now is give it a polish where I've rubbed that with the wet and dry I'll just polish it with a bit of car uh, cut and polish and uh, that, that'll bring back the Bakelite I don't know if you can see it. there it is there um, it's pretty much gone I'll just 
polish the rest of this with some, uh, probably use a bit of brass here actually. Instead of brass, I'm going to use a bit of automotive polish here. This is a, uh, a Sunday afternoon uh, polish your car type uh, consist or grade. So a uh, little bit of grit in it, but uh, generally it's just a polish. Just polish it back with this bit of cloth here. And that looks sensational. So that's um, that's good. I'll keep going with that. I will run over with some Brasso. The Brasso just seems to bring out a bit more gloss in it. Uh, but that's coming up great. So Cool. I've done that with the car polish. And I'll just use a bit of Brasso. And see if it makes any real difference. And I'm sure it will. Alright, I'll just let that dry for a minute. And I'll polish it off. So, yeah, that looks good. It's like a piano now. I'll continue with the Brasso, and uh, when I'm finished, I'll have a look and see how it comes up. Okay, I've finished with the Brasso, and uh, yeah, it's come up very, very nice. Very nice. This uh, case is in very good condition. So, I'll take this inside. Uh, I need to have a look at the knobs. They looked a bit shabby, so I'll have a look at those. Here's the knobs here, and they're not as bad as I thought. I thought they were all motley, but they're actually okay. They're discoloured, and I don't know if that's from the sun, or probably is, because one side's more discoloured than the other. So I'd say it's been affected by the sun. So what I'm going to do is get some peroxide. Uh, this is uh, creme peroxide for hair, but it's 12% peroxide in the mixture. I've done it before on a Philips uh, transistor, and I'm just looking at it now, and it still looks pretty good. So I've got a bag here and it's just coming in tonight now so I can't put it out now but I'll put it out in the morning. So I'm just going to pour it on I think. I can massage it in the bag. Ooh, that's a lot. So this is a vacuum bag. I'll just go and uh, vacuum it and try and leave a bit of an air bubble in there so the plastic doesn't touch the, um, the material there. And uh, put it out in the sun in the morning we'll see how it comes out tomorrow night. There they are in the packet and I've sealed the packet up. It's got a pillow effect there so in the morning I throw it out in the sun. Uh, I'll keep moving the peroxide around them uh, from time to time tomorrow and just make sure it gets an even coating and perhaps rotate them a bit to make sure they get the sunshine either side. So it'll be interesting to see how these come out. I'm ready to put this back in the cabinet and I've just done a few things and I'll just point them out before we go any further. I polished this with some Brasso and then coated it in some clear coat. It's got a bit of a scratch on it which is unfortunate but it looks pretty good. I cleaned this off with some um, kitchen spray and that was pretty grubby this uh, mesh here. So uh, that came up okay. Now I still can hear some garbled sound to it when I put the external antenna on it. If you put it on the internal antenna that's it's fine. I, th I thought I'd done everything I can to try and get rid of it but then it struck me that there's a little capacitor here and it's 500 puff or picofarad and it grounds the external aerial to the chassis not to the b minus the chassis and here it is here it's c12 and it's 0 0.0005 microfarad and its purpose is to insulate the chassis from the external antenna here so if you're outside in the wet grass you reach up and grab the antenna you don't get electrocuted uh, if something's gone wrong in the radio now what i've done is put a 0 0.01 cap on the same point and i've got a clip lead i'll just turn it up now i can't do this for long there's a song on now, so what I'll do is play it for five seconds and then I'll put the clip on and cut the video and play it for another five seconds. So this is with the clip off. Okay, now I'll put the clip on. That's fixed it completely. Absolute clear sound now. So I'll just turn it up again and uh, we'll try and hear it and I'll take the clip off halfway through. I'm not blaming the radio, I think it's my antennas more the problem here. I've ordered some Y specification safety caps so when I get one I'll put one in there. And this one here needs to be a 0.05 uh, safety cap as well, I've got to change that. I've also ordered a polarised plug to replace this uh, lead here. So when I get that, I'll fit it. I've already put a fuse in, so it's just a matter of putting it in here and 
uh, applying some strain relief here. I've just wired this temporarily. Well, on the home stretch, I'll just put this radio back in its case. So I'll just put the screws in. All I need now is the knobs. I'll just go and grab them off the back lawn. Right, well there they are. They look pretty good. I'll go and cut the bag open. We'll have a look. Well there they are. And they are brilliant. They are fantastic. Look at that. And here's a treated one. And here's what it looked like originally. So uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, that's terrific. All right, let's put them on. Well, there it is all done and it looks fantastic it's come up so well because it was looked after so well that it's uh, it's just responded really well this is an american built arvin and uh, it's from an early 50s 51 52 acdc it has got a floating b minor so it's not quite a hot chassis but uh yeah very nice uh, i do i do like american radios they're very simple uh, sort of cheap and cheerful if you like anyway enough rattling on i'll just turn it on a lot of great events, 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 but it can't stop Brisbane's longest standing Yuletide tradition, the 4KQ Christmas lights. Who rely on you as mum, and I see you today, Bet, you're wearing the Legacy yes. shirt. And, and uh, as well as the Barnaby Joyce uh, incident, so... When you're looking for a work vehicle, you want the whole package, and the Ford commercial range always delivers. Well, I hope so on the next video I really enjoyed working on this little radio and I realized that there's every second YouTube videos on American 5 radios but <laughs> but it's new to me and it was a bit of a discovery for me just to work out how things actually worked on it and yeah I'm pretty impressed with it it's a very very nice little radio well designed and and looks terrific so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure This radio is from the early 50s and I often wonder what these radios saw and said over that time. Get your Ovaltine, the food drink for rocket power. Remember what to do, friends. Duck and cover. This first satellite was today successfully launched in the USSR. Cadillac's newest marvel of styling and engineering is now at your Cadillac dealers. Now, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed.